Welcome back. In the last video we described the hydration of ethylene to ethanol. So how we, if we add water and have a catalyst such as dilute sulfuric acid, if we have those two present, we can make ethanol. In this video we're going to cover some of the reasons why we might want to make ethanol. And that reason would be because ethanol is a really good solvent. So that's one of the advantages of ethanol. So I'll read the actual dot point. It says, describe and account for the many uses of ethanol as a solvent for the polar and non-polar substances. So what I'll do is um, cover two verbs that are mentioned. We've got describe and account. So the account word is a new one. Account just means that we have to explain why they get used as a polar and non-polar. So what properties they have that make them good solvents for non-polar and polar substances. And describe just means we have to kind of name some and explain why um, they can be used or describe some of the uses of ethanol as a solvent. So first, before we start, we want to make sure we go over these words that come up here. We've got the word solvent. Solvent just means so something as a solvent is something that does, like if, for example, you have water and sugar or water and salt. Water is a solvent and sugar or salt is a solute because water or sugar dissolves in, in um, water. Because salt or sugar dissolves in water. So water is a solvent because stuff dissolves in water and sugar and salt is a solute. So in this case, we're asking why is ethanol a good solvent? So why do things dissolve well in ethanol? And why do both polar and non-polar substances dissolve? So again, those two words um, came up in the year 11, polar and non-polar. So polar was if you have an A. So here we've got a minus and a plus. So a minus O is minus because O and likes to attract um, electrons. That makes it a minus. And H is a plus because H likes to give away electrons and it makes it plus. So these two, we've got both minus and plus, which means it's polar. If it has only minus or only plus, it's non-polar. Right? So for example, this end here, the OH end is polar, whereas this end here, which has only a plus and nothing else, no, no negative, this would be, if this were by itself, it were non-polar because you don't have both the pluses and the, the minuses next to each other. <clears throat> so the actual dot point is asking, why does ethanol, which is this structure here, make a good solvent? So why do things dissolve in ethanol, especially things which are polar and things which are non-polar? And so I'll go for that step by step now. So first we need to look at, and I, sorry, I, did, I actually wrote over this here. But it's supposed to say hydrocarbon chain. First we need to look at why ethanol makes a good solvent for polar substances. So in this case, what I have here is I've got, this is here's ethane. Ethane has only hydrogens. So this is a hydrocarbon chain. And it is non-polar because it doesn't have any minus and pluses. It's only got hydrogens, which are all plus. All right. So that makes it a polar substance, a non-polar substance. All right. So ethane is non-polar. Now, ethane would actually not dissolve in water because water is a polar substance, but it does dissolve in ethanol. And the reason why is because if we bring it closer, it's, its hydrogens would actually repel it, right? So here you have plus and pluses, and this does not attract. So these two don't attract. Only negative and plus attract like a magnet. So these don't attract. So we would be expecting them to repel each other. But there's something called dispersion forces, which still act. So you actually have dispersion forces. Once they come close enough, these like ones, you have dispersion forces happening. So these yellow dots here are dispersion forces. And they hold them together. So if they're held together, that means they can dissolve. So these are dispersion forces. And these dispersion forces allow ethanol 
to be a good solvent for nonpolar substances because they have the same structure, the same hydrocarbon ends. So these, that's why I wrote hydrocarbons here because they have a hydrocarbon tail which allows them to dissolve nonpolar substances such as ethane. But I just used ethane as an example. The ones which we will go over, the ones which you need to know for your dot point are these ones because some medicines, some food flavorings, and some cosmetics are all nonpolar. So some of them not all, but some are nonpolar, which means they don't have any OH groups, which means they don't dissolve in water. So by using something else instead, by using ethanol, we can make sure that medicines, food flavorings, and cos cosmetics can actually dissolve, and we can then put them into our body or wherever else, we, or on our face in case of cosmetics. So there's one example here. Here we've got two different types of medication. The top one has an OH group here, and that makes it a polar substance. So this dissolves in water, so that's no problem. But this one down here has none. So it has no polar substances, no polar ends, which means it would not dissolve in water, but it will dissolve in ethanol. All right, so this is a nonpolar me medicine, nonpolar medicine, and if we put that into ethanol, like a beaker of ethanol, it will dissolve in ethanol. It will not dissolve in water. Yeah? That, was, so that was the example of medicine. Just, but also, the same thing goes for food flavorings. So food flavorings might be in food or they might be in liquid drinks as well. But some, some of them don't dissolve in water, so we put a bit, a bit of ethanol into it to make sure they dissolve in ethanol instead. And also cosmetics as well. So cosmetics is our makeups and all that kind of stuff. And often makeup itself will actually be in ethanol, not in water, because some of the makeup parts don't dissolve in water, they dissolve in ethanol instead. Right? So describe and account for the many uses of ethanol as a solvent for polar and nonpolar substances. The reason why it makes a good solvent for nonpolar substances is because it has this part here, which is the hydrocarbon chain. And this hydrocarbon chain allows dispersion forces to occur between the chains of it and whatever it's, it's dissolving. So in this case, it was ethane. And these dispersion forces hold them quite, they're not that strong, but they're strong enough to hold them together. And that allows them to bond together for a while. And that was, that's what needs to happen for things to dissolve. Right? So we said that dispersion forces between ethane and ethanol allow it to dissolve. But the same goes for certain medicines, certain food flavorings, and certain cosmetics. So these were the described. That was described the uses. We use them for medicine, um, dissolving, food flavoring, dissolving, and cosmetic dissolving. And account for the reasons why was because they have these hydrocarbon chains, which allows us to dissolve nonpolar substances. And one other important feature is what's liquid at room temperature. So obviously, if we want to dissolve something, we want to make sure whatever we're dissolving it in is liquid. So, for example, we can't dissolve other things, like, for example, ethylene or even ethane, even though it's gas form. We can't dissolve things in ethane because if it's gas, it's not going to actually be um, dissolvable into it. But ethanol is liquid, so we can dissolve things into liquids. So that's another reason why ethanol is a good solvent, because it's liquid and it has these hydrocarbon chains. And the other reason why, so it says, um, describe the uses of ethanol as a solvent for polar substances. So again, these polar substances were the substances that have an OH group. In this case, ethanol has an OH group right here. And what you can imagine is this here is a water molecule. So here's a water molecule. And it's going to come closer. And the hydrogen, so the positive will be attracted to the negative, like a magnet. These two are clinging together. And the negative here, so from the oxygen, is going to be attracted to the positive of the hydrogen. So this is going to be also bonding together. So water can dissolve in ethanol, and other things that have an OH group can dissolve in ethanol. And the reason why is because of this hydrogen bonding. So this red arrow was the hydrogen bonding. So ethanol makes a very good solvent because it has these hydrogen bondings which make it which are possible because it has a hydroxide group which is the OH group 
So here I wrote a hydroxyl group, which is that OH group. And every every null molecule has one, and that allows it to dissolve polar substances, such as water, but also other ionic substances, and anything that is water soluble, so glucose or anything else as well. So these are the describe the uses. These are the uses of that ethanol has that OH group, which allows it to dissolve these ones. And the reason why it can dissolve these ones is because that OH group allows hydrogen bonding to occur. Here, this one. And hydrogen bonding is very strong and will make sure that it's attached to the molecule for a while, not directly, but indirectly. And that will allow it to dissolve. And here we've got the same um, thing here. This is a ethanol. And here you've got two water molecules. And you've got the negative and the positive being attracted. This is the hydrogen bonding. And here you've got a positive and a negative, and they're attracted in hydrogen bondings. So this is why we have water dissolving in ethanol. Anything that's water soluble also dissolving ethanol. Right, so the good thing about, I'll summarize everything again. The good thing about ethanol is that it has both an OH group, or another name for OH group is a hydroxyl group, and it has this hydrocarbon chain, which is these, just these carbons and the hydrogens. It has both of these, which means it can dissolve both polar and nonpolar substances. And the reason why is because its hydrocarbon chain will make dispersion forces occur or make them happen between other hydrocarbon chains. So these was usually not dissolved in water, but they do dissolve in ethanol. And same with ethanol has its hydrocarbon chains, but it also has its OH group, which makes it possible to dissolve other polar substances because you have hydrogen bonding occurring between the different OH groups, the hydroxide groups. And because of these reasons, we can use um, ethanol to dissolve medicines that are not soluble in water, food flavorings that are not soluble in water, and cosmetics that are, would be otherwise not soluble in water. But we can also use it to um, dissolve ionic substances and water-soluble substances and water, which, um, yeah, so he has both the pros and the cons. Like there's, It's a very good solvent because we can do both the polar and the nonpolar substances when it comes to ethanol. So I hope that was useful.